And we have a guest here that I've been looking forward to uh, talking to here for the past couple of weeks. Uh, I, I gave you kind of the backstory here before we went into the break. I just talked to uh, Mr. Kading off the air and filled him in. He's a former LAPD detective. He wrote a book called Murder Rap, and, and the USA Network just did a miniseries uh, based on the book. It's the untold story of the Biggie Smalls and Tupac Shakur murder investigations. I told you my personal connection with uh, a very good friend of mine by the name of Harry Billups. Now, Harry Billups and I were best friends when I lived in Southern California. And uh, in fact, he was in my wedding when I got married in Southern California in the 80s. And we've kept in touch over the years. I've only seen him one time. Uh, since I moved out here to Colorado in 1990, so quite a long time ago. But we've kept in touch. We talk, we text. A couple weeks ago, I happened to Google him, which I'd never done before. And his picture popped up, and it was tied to the Biggie Smalls murder. And I was completely stunned by it. And so I started reading, and I started reading every article I could get my hands on, and I texted him, and I, I said, Harry, did you know that your picture comes up as the guy who killed Biggie Smalls? And he called me right away. We talked for 45 minutes. He told me his story, and it's tragic how he got caught up in this and has been really, uh, really been convicted by uh, social media, basically, as the guy who did it. And, um, and I said, can you come on the show? And he said, no, man. He goes, I, I, I don't want to go on any shows, even with you. He said, I've avoided all of this, and I'm just trying to get past it. But he said, give Greg Kading a call, uh, the detective that worked on this case. And he had a book, and he'll come on. So we have Greg Kading on the show. Greg, good morning. Thank you so much for coming on. I've been wanting to talk to you now for the past couple of weeks. Good morning. Thanks for having me. Good morning from Southern California. The sun's just coming up. Yeah, I know, and I know it's early for you. And um, looking at your bio here, I noticed you and I are uh, both Long Beach State grads, so we got that in common. You're also an Orange County guy, too, so uh, we have that in common as well. Um, so you wrote a book called Murder Rap. You, uh, you were assigned to investigate this unsolved murder of uh, Biggie Smalls, and so first of all, let me let me talk about the Harry Billups connection. And I should tell you, you know, over the years, I've I've read stories about this, and the Harry Billups name has popped up, and I just noted it because that's my friend's name, but I never put the two together because Harry Billups would never do anything like this, and. So I've I've seen the name out there, and unfortunately for him, twenty years later, it's it's still out there, and there's nothing he can do about it. Well, I don't know that there's not anything he can do about it. Certainly, um, he has his own voice, and I understand why he's kind of uh, avoided any media attention or, or interviews. But I don't personally think that's in his best interest. I think he ought to vindicate himself and let his voice be heard and. Now with this kind of shift of, uh, of theories um, that have taken place over the last few years, you know, he's completely vindicated and he ought to be uh, voicing his, um, his frustration over the, the malignment and the, uh, the false accusations that have been lodged at him. Uh, I don't think it's best just to stay in the shadows sometimes. His, uh, his connection to it was a guy named David Mack, uh, who... Um was his roommate in college. Uh, David Mack was uh, charged with robbing a bank, and he was an L.A. cop. And Harry told me that uh, David Mack's wife called him and told him, hey, you know, my husband's in in jail. What am I going to do? We got to get a lawyer. You got to help. And he said, the only mistake I made was I went down and visited him in jail and talked to him. And I guess a jailhouse informant is, from what I can understand, uh, implicated David Mack and Harry Billups uh, in the Biggie Smalls murder. Now, I also read just recently that the jailhouse informant admitted that he lied about it. That, 
That's correct. And and let me just to back up a second. Um, there was never the name Harry Billups associated with anything. Uh, there was never even the name Amir Mohammed associated with anything. The only name that came out of this informant's mouth were four, were four names: uh, Abraham, Ashmir, Amir, and, and Kiki, I think. And so he's just throwing out these these random names. And the one that stuck for a previous investigator was just that four-letter word, Amir. And through Amir, he finds out, wow, David Mack has an associate named Amir Mohammed, a.k.a. Harry Billups. But there was, you know, it was, it was this very loose association uh, based on a, a, a relatively common name um, in the Islamic community. And now, next thing you know, Harry Billups is being associated with a murder. And from what I understand, you could probably clarify this with Mr. Billups himself, is that, um, you know, he was a good friend of, of not only David Mack, but of David Mack's wife. And so when David Mack is looking at going to prison for years, it would be natural for him to reach out to somebody that he can trust and has a relationship already with his family and say, hey, you know, I'm going to be going away. What can you do to help, you know, look after my loved ones for me? And that's what I think happened. I think he went down there to do David Mack a solid. They were friends from college. And he's going to help look after the family while David Mack is rightfully convicted and being sent away for, for his crimes. He did say that. He said that he was good friends with his wife. He also said he's godfather of his kids. So he was well, doing what, what any good friend would do, you know, going down to see if he could help. And, you know, it's just so unfortunate how he got wrapped up in this. And, uh, you know, once things get out on the Internet, it's pretty hard to unwind them. And all the all of the yeah. theories out there. And this has been somewhat of, well, it's been an unsolved murder. So, wait, I have a question. Did it, Harry Billups get arrested then for the murder? Harry Billups was never arrested. And for a short period of time, he was being... You know, he's a person of interest that, you know, there was a legitimate reason to maybe figure out what the association was with him and David Mack. Um, there were still outstanding funds from the bank robbery. And so investigators are naturally going to look at all of David Mack's associates and say, you know, are they involved in some way, shape or form with this crime? So there was a legitimate reason to ask these questions, but to draw conclusions with no information to draw the conclusions from that was where law enforcement was was reckless and erroneous. And the L.A. Times picked up on it and published a story identifying Harry Billups, a.k.a. Amir Mohammed, as a possible shooter. And in time, they had to retract that story and essentially apologize for misreporting. But once, like, like your co-host is saying, once that information is out in the public, it's sometimes difficult to, to draw it back. We're talking to Greg Kading. He is a former LAPD detective. Uh, he wrote a book called Murder Rap, The Untold Story of the Biggie Smalls Murder. And uh, there's apparently a movie coming out in September starring Johnny Depp and Forrest Whitaker about this story. And it's based on another book by another former LAPD detective named Russell Poole. And it seems like, just from my research, Russell Poole's uh, investigation may be a little different than yours. They're completely different. Uh, Russell's pools, Russell Poole's investigation was built completely off of circumstantial information, speculation, and and nuance. And he drew conclusions that he should not have done. And you can't do that in an investigation. You know, we have a job to pursue the guilty, but we also have a job to protect the innocent. And when you're putting information out that maligns an innocent person and associating them with a crime, that's, that's contrary to what we're supposed to be doing as, as, as investigators and law enforcement officials. We drew completely different conclusions because my conclusions were built on fact and evidence. And your conclusion is what? Who killed Biggie Smalls? Biggie Smalls was killed in retaliation for the murder of Tupac Shakur in Las Vegas six months earlier. That murder in Las Vegas was done by a Southside Compton Crip by the name of Orlando Anderson. Orlando Anderson shot and killed Tupac Shakur. In retaliation, Suge Knight had a gang member associate of his named Poochie Wardell Faust, who was a blood associate from Compton. Uh, he had him retaliate and kill Biggie Smalls. And that guy's now dead, correct? 
Orlando Anderson, the shooter of Tupac Shakur, was killed in 1998. Wardell Faust, the shooter of Biggie Smalls, was killed in 2002. You know, interesting. And when I talked to Harry, I, I said, you know, maybe they'll catch the guy who, you know, and, and tr- you know, take the guy to trial who did this. And he said, Rick, he goes, you can't be a gang hitman and live until you're 60 years old. He said, the guy who killed him's dead. And that right. that's right. correlates with what you're saying here. So yeah, absolutely. What, real quick question is that so was David Mack the original guy that they thought killed him? There was some information about uh, law enforcement connections with death row records, and there was a belief that Suge Knight was behind the murder of Biggie Smalls. Well, that information turned out to be accurate, and there was association with some various law enforcement officers that were doing security for death row records. And so that was the kind of um, the circumstantial connection of things. And so then they tried to draw a connection between David Mack and death row records, and they never could. There was never a connection between these, these folks um, with Suge Knight or death row records. And then once you start to look at David Mack as a possible shooter, uh, then you start looking at his um, associates. associates. And one of the one of the composites that was drawn up after the shooting of Biggie Smalls and some of the witness information was that the suspect was uh, uh, possibly wearing a bow tie and dressed as a Fruit of Islam individual. Well, then you can draw a connection. Well, Amir Mohammed is a, is a Muslim. Now he's got the connection. And so it's all this speculation and circumstantially based stuff that is interesting and should be looked at but you can't draw conclusions from it. Hmm. Uh, David Mack uh, went to prison for robbing a bank while he was a cop. And during the 90s, there it seems like it was a, a pretty tumultuous time for the LAPD, and, and it, there does seem to be a lot of corruption uh, during the 90s in the LAPD. You were there. You would know better than I, but I, I think a lot of that has what is fueled a lot of these conspiracies. Absolutely. And, uh, and, and that is the perception is that there was a lot of corruption. But uh, in, in truth, it, it doesn't take, you know, it takes a couple of bad guys to sour the entire bunch. And back in the 90s and even today, of course, in any large organization, you're going to have people that don't belong there and aren't doing the things they're supposed to be doing. We had dirty cops such as Rafael Perez and David Mack and those involved in the Rampart scandal back in, you know, in the 1990s. Uh, but they, 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 they don't represent the whole department. They don't re- represent guys like me who are the common guys that are out there trying to do the best job that they can. And it was a department that policed itself really well. You know, we would constantly, through our internal affairs division and others, um, you know, be identifying problematic cops. And, and taking them off the job and, and even prosecuting them, such as David Mack. I mean, it was the LAPD that put David Mack, their own, in prison. Hmm. Looking at the trailer for this movie that's coming out in September, it appears as if they're going to implicate David Mack in an LAPD cover-up uh, in the Biggie Smalls murder. Have you seen the trailer? I have, and uh, I, I, I've, I've tried to caution that production company for years uh, when, they're, when this whole thing was being discussed as a potential movie, uh, that, it, that it's reckless, it's, it's erroneous, and, and probably um, very litigious. Mm-hmm. David Mack and, and, and Harry Billups, should they be misrepresented as, as, as murderers uh, when all of the evidence uh, 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 when all the evidence denies that or refutes that, uh, I think they have an actionable position. And I'm not a fan of David Mack. He's a dirty cop, and he, you know, he embarrassed us. But he's not the murderer of Biggie Smalls. And Harry Billups absolutely has no connection or relation to it. And should they allude to the idea that he's a murderer, uh, you know, I think he ought to get an attorney and, and, and fill his pockets with, uh, uh, you know, with... Uh, <laughs> with the profits of it. Yeah. Let me ask right. one more quick question. If Harry Billups never changed his name to Amir, would he never been implicated? Absolutely not. I, 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 yes. 
I guess the answer Interesting. to that question. Yeah, yeah. because yeah. I wondered about the Amir thing, because since that name came up in the informant. That was the only connection. And then the informant was disproven. He recanted. He admitted that he lied. And so once you lose that source, then there's nothing Mm -hmm. to base the theory on. The whole thing just dissipates into thin air and there's nothing left. And so the damage, it's like I was saying, you've done the damage has been done and it's very hard to correct that. Um, that he deserves to be vindicated. I asked Harry when we spoke, I said, have you thought about writing a book telling your story? I said, you, you, you've got a best-selling book you're sitting on here and maybe even a, a, a movie of some sort. And he said, people have told me that, but he said, no, I don't want to do that. He says he he feels like he uh, there's some risk there for him personally um, because this was a gang hit that somebody might want to try to get him. Do you feel the same way as a cop who investigated it? Absolutely not. No, absolutely not. Harry Billups uh, it should have no fear of anything. Uh, the, you know, the people that were involved in, this, in these murders know who they are, and they know that it's not him. And uh, anybody that does their homework can quickly determine that Harry Billups was uh, mis, uh, you know, falsely accused. And so who would have a problem with him? There shouldn't be, I can't imagine anybody. Well, that's a good point. That's a very good point. And, and, you know, some of the stories that I've read, recent stories about this mystery, uh, they have uh, taken him out of it. They, they, the ones I've seen mention David Mack in an accomplice now. They don't mention David Mack and Amir Muhammad or Harry Billups. So it seems like recent stories have kind of eliminated him from the picture, but you've still got 20 years of internet conspiracy stories out there with his picture in this mugshot photo or the composite photo. Uh, and, and the composite photo looks a little bit like him. And so I, I well, guess that's maybe how that all happened. Well, the composite photos, of, there was two. There were two composite photos um, or drawings that were taken by uh, w- with the same sources, and they don't look anything alike. If you compare these two composites, you're saying, "Well, who's who in the zoo?" Because neither of these guys look anything alike, but it's the same people saying this is what they look like. So, th- the composites themselves are very problematic, and oftentimes, you know, a, a composite's somewhat generic. You can look at that photograph. I can show you ten people that I could say it resembles. Mm-hmm. I'm sorry, the composite. You know, it's it's not something that you can rely on uh, without other uh, corroborating evidence. And so I don't think it looks like Harry Billups personally. I don't think the hairline really matches. I don't mm-hmm. think the facial structure is identical. Um, so for me, I don't see it. Uh, others might. Um, but again, you know, people have a tendency to read into something with a foredrawn conclusion. I believe it's Harry Billups. And now look, don't they look alike? Yeah, that's true. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Good point. Well, this is fascinating, obviously, to me, since this is uh, it's it's given me a personal connection to this this story that a lot of people are really still interested today. Uh, the book Murder Rap was written by Greg Cading. Uh, you've been a great guest on the radio, Greg, and uh, I didn't see the USA uh, Network uh, documentary or miniseries. I want to watch it now. Can you? Can you? get that on demand or how, how can I watch that? Yeah. So it, it ran, it's uh, it ran the series, <clears throat> excuse me, through the 10 weeks of, uh, of U- USA and network, I'm sorry, Netflix has purchased the rights to it. And so it'll, it, I think in another month or so it'll be on Netflix and that'll be international. So anybody can access it at that point. So, and in the very near future, you can binge watch the whole thing. <laughs> Nice. Um, I'm curious in the uh, in the mini series. Uh, do you talk about Harry Billups, Amir Muhammad? Do you do you uh, mention them at all, or you just leave them out of it? No, we deal with it, and we 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 disprove it. You know, we deal with it in in quick order, just like in the real investigation. We dismissed it because we knew that there was nothing to support the theory. Um, and so we don't spend a whole lot of time on it because it was something that wasn't viable investigatively. And so, you know, we, we, we make a point of it and then we move on, but we don't focus on it because there's no reason to focus on something that isn't going to take anywhere. 
So what's next for you, Greg? You're retired. Uh, you just had a successful TV miniseries, book, all that. Are you going to write more books or what do you do? Yeah, I keep my hands full. I'm all over the place, to be honest with you. I've got a private investigations company that keeps me busy. And then uh, we're looking forward, hopefully, to a, a second season of Unsolved uh, at USA and then working on another pilot script. So I'm kind of all over the place. What do they say? A, a, a jack of all trades, but master of none. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> we, we feel you on yeah, that. We are like too. Us, right. <laughs> <laughs> kind of like us, Greg. I'd love to meet you someday, man. You've been a great guest. Yeah. And um, Thanks for having thank me. you so much for coming on. We're going to have Greg on our afternoon show up on KOA later. Uh, tell the story up there as well. So we'll talk to you a little bit later on today, Greg. Thank you so much for coming on. Hey, pass my information on to Mr. Billups if he needs to talk. I'd be happy to to help him out. And I've got all of the investigative material at his disposal should he ever decide to um and take some type of action to defend himself. I will do that today, and I believe he uh, will have this up on my page here at thefox.com. So uh, I'm going to tell Harry, I didn't I didn't tell him you were coming on today, but I'm going to tell him to uh, listen to this, uh, and then we'll see what happens after that. Thank you. We'll talk to you later. Okay, sounds Bye. great. Bye. Awesome. Thank you. That's Greg Kading, former LAPD detective. Fascinating. I think it is anyway. Were you interested? Yeah, I mean, definitely. It was yeah. definitely interesting, and it it was interesting that the only thing about your friend Harry is if his name, if he never changed his right. name, he would have never been involved in it. He would have never been involved in it. He would have never been involved in it. 